Hello, fair Hello fellow engineers, and um, what we're going to be looking at today is the sketch room FreeCAD. And one of the complaints that most people have is how to rotate geometry in the sketch. And there is a reason why you can't rotate geometry in the sketch, and that is down to constraints. And I'll show you, I will demonstrate the reasons why now. So if we go into the sketcher uh, workbench, I'll just wait for this to load. And what I'll do is I'll place some, some uh, shapes on. What's happening? Yeah. What I'll do is I'll place some shapes onto the actual canvas so we can actually see what's going on. Going on. And I'll explain to you what uh, reasons why we're having problems with rotation. So what I'll do is create a new file and we're in the sketch work top here. So I will create a sketch and assign it to the XY plane. Take the defaults from there. So we've got our sketch open. So what we're going to do is, is actually uh, start with a normal square. Now, if I press the skate so I can get my default cursor back. We have our normal square here and we can move the sides around. So we can change the dimensions of the actual shape itself. But we can't rotate. There's no way we can rotate this. There is no rotate tool up the top, the top. And the reason why is that when we look at a piece of geometry, it's actually made up of lines that are constrained to each other. So if we go to the constraints down the bottom here, each of these constraints are constraining the corners of the shape. Each of these, these two here, are horizontal constraints. And the last two are vertical constraints. Now if you think about it in what we're looking at here, we're looking at a, um, a view down onto the piece of, piece, of, uh, piece of work. And we have a horizontal and a vertical in our 3D space. I know this looks 2D. Uh, go away, see cleaner. And though this looks 2D, we can actually hit the Alt key. Another uh, Alt, Alt key. Control key. Let's go. What key is? Which key is it? Oh, there. Shift. Shift key. And as you can see, we can go into 3D space here. So we're actually doing a top-down view onto our onto our piece of work. So if you think about constraining, you cannot constrain away from this shape away from the horizontal and vertical unless we remove these constraints so we can't rotate this because if we start constraining to the vertical and horizontal again then it will just snap back so this is the reason why you can't rotate to rotate you would have to actually remove these constraints now as I was saying before this actual uh, square is made up of a number of lines that are constrained together so I can show you this by actually clicking on these constraints here, if I click on them, you can see on the left hand side the constraint is highlighted. And if I hit the delete key, nothing happens. Um, now, delete key. So, we delete these constraints. And now we will be able to move these up and down. So, in fact, if these were constrained properly, we could actually rotate this this object. Now, let me just finish what I was saying about the actual this object is made up of uh, of actual um, lines. So, if I take the, the corner constraints and hit delete, now if, now I've deleted these constraints. I know they look like they're still here. I can actually start pulling these out, and you can see the shape itself is actually it's not actually a square. I know it's a square. It's actually made up of of these lines. So let's get rid of this. And this is, as I said, is the reason why you can't actually rotate. So to actually effectively rotate a shape, what you have to do is actually change these constraints. So I've got this square here, and I want to keep it this size, but I want to rotate it. Uh, allow me, allow me to rotate this by pulling these sides in this direction. As you can see, I can't at the moment. So the first thing I've got to do is 
remove the horizontal constraints just by clicking on them and hitting delete. Now I can, as you can see, I can start moving the shape about, and you can see the top is actually rotating. So we can do the same again with the vertical constraints. So now we've got rid of our main constraints. We want to still keep the corner constraints because we want to uh, allow for uh, the lines to actually stay in, in the shape that we want. Um, I now want to constrain this so we can actually allow it to rotate. So the way to do that is to take the sides and actually put an angle constraint on there. So we go at the top here, fix the angle of the line and 90 degrees because obviously it's a square. So I'll just select in the two and hit an angle. So I'll do that for both these sides. Okay. So now if we start moving this about, you can see this will still keep in that that angle, that 90 degree angle. So I'm going to do the same for this side. And probably don't need to do it for this side because everything's going to keep in that angle, there we go. So you can see it's actually starting to rotate now, but we're, we've got a problem with actual pulling the scale. So this is scaling up and down rather than rotate or and rotating at the same time. So just undo that in a second. So what I want to do now is click on the actual constraints on the corners because I want to actually fix the width and the height of this. Sorry, sorry, not the width and the height, the length of the sides. And we use the, so we've clicked both the corners here. And we're going to go for the fixed length of line or the distance between a line and a vertex. So hit that. And I'm going to say, I'm going to round this to 75. So it's whatever, whatever um, length you want. I'm going to do the same for this corner here as well. And I'm going to say that's 55. So as you can see, I've put a number of constraints on here. Now, if you look now, I can actually rotate rotate this object by just using the corners. So now I've constrained the actual shape properly to what I want. Sorry, let me rephrase that. I know the, the previous shape was constrained correctly to and it was locked in 3D space I've actually constrained this now to the shape itself so I can take the sides and rotate this to whatever I want now it looks a bit messy inside because all the constraints are, are showing so it's quite hard to actually build on top of this geometry without getting confused of where you've actually put in your extended geometry or your lines so what I'd like to do is actually remove these um, not remove them but actually hide these constraints by going over to your your task tab down here and just clicking these constraints so they disappear so now we've got a geometry that we can actually rotate and rotate to our heart's consent and we can just change the constraints within for the length so we can actually uh, allow, allow us to actually change the dimensions of this shape so that's how you would rotate geometry in the sketch without using for, because of a non-existence rotate tool. And obviously if you think about it, the reason why that rotate tool isn't there is because of the constraints of the geometry. You can't rotate a horizontally or vertically constrained uh, geometry in the sketcher. For other shapes, let's get rid of this. say for a more complex shape, so I'm going to use the polygon tool and I'm just going to draw something a bit more let's start again, something a bit more complex so for instance this shape here if I wanted to rotate this shape uh, the problem I've got is that I have 
no constraints on on these so I have to actually be quite careful of what I'm trying to do here and the same it's the same thing happens with the same thing thing goes for the, uh, the square the best thing I can do is to strain the angles so place an angles constraint on here place one on here Uh, let's constrain this angle here and this one and this one and I might as well do this one as well this might not allow me to do it no that's it last angle I can't really constrain so those angles are constrained now but you've also got problems again with the square problems with uh, length constraints so the dimensions will change so all we need to do is constrain the length of these now actually let's just click on one side length sometimes it takes a bit of playing about to actually uh, constrain the uh, shape itself once you've done that you, uh, you get a feel for what size when you're constraining to allow you to rotate the object. Oops, that's not going to allow me to do that one. Will it allow me to do this one? No. Nope. So now I should see our shape is now allowed to rotate. So there you go. So that's angle and length constraints allowing you to rotate a more complex uh, shape there. So I hope this helps. Um, oh, one other constraint. A little trick if you've got a circle and what we'll do we'll constrain its uh, diameter say 50 <coughs> and sometimes we want to chat um, attach modify this sorry modify this geometry so I'm gonna actually modify this by adding a yeah I'll add one of those in here let's move this down and use the trim tool and trim that off trim these sides and get rid of this piece of geometry here So now we've got this shape. Um, obviously, you can't. If I was trying to rotate it, we can actually rotate the shape because this allows rotation here because of because of the shape we've intersected uh, into this geometry. Um, but we have to now start our constraints again. So length constraint. We we'll constrain this length as well. So now I've constrained these to see what happens now. So yeah, I've still got some problems. Control Z. So what I'm going to do is move this away from the center, and then I'll constrain this part here. So we've got the middle of our geometry we've intersected with the circle, and the actual point, uh, the actual center of the actual circle here. So we'll add a constraint there. So there we go. So we've got that nicely constrained down, but we've got no rotation. So what I find one of the easiest things to do is add a a line going to the centre and use the um, this constraint here. The I used to call this point constraint, but I've never actually seen this one here. So we we'll click on these two points. So it's constrained there and press escape to get a point back and what I'm going to do is click on this point here and use the fix a point onto an object so oh, let's have to pick the object first there we go so those two pick that so now if I 
don't press escape if I go back to this object now I can actually use this eh, it's not working so there's some other degree pokery I've got to do here and I can that's fixed on there so what I should be able to do is constrain between oops, these two okay ah now it's probably something to do with the seat there's a horizontal constraint here this is a reason why so let's undo that yep may not need this line let's just get rid of this horizontal constraint and now yes okay so we've got a horizontal constraint that we need to get rid of and I need to fix the length of that that line's already fixed these two points aren't constrained for some reason so let's reconstrain those there we go yep so those two there these two points here need constraining and now now I can move that but to make things easier I could actually attach a line like I was doing before and actually constrain this to the actual um, circle itself and then do some additional constraints in here okay to allow me to actually manipulate this with just using those two points if I so wish so there you go so that's how to constrain a object and allow for a rotation um, one of the things that I keep on seeing come up on the forums I'm a bit of a lurker in the actual free care forum at the moment um, and I see this this come up why can't we rotate in the software itself um, well as you can see as if moving in free working in 3d space it's hard to constrain something against horizontal because um, if you rotate it that horizontal is no longer horizontal it's a diagonal or a degree so you have to actually get your mindset into working with with degrees and length rather than horizontal or verticals okay hope that helped and uh, see you soon.